The farther we get into this year of 2024, the more I see people who seem to be very miserable, very plugged into the system, very just stressed out, uh, lonely looking. And the more I wanted to talk about the idea of separating yourself from the norm. I've done that for years now. I haven't had a quote normal job for years. Uh, I've technically, I guess, still had the post office job. We're still still seeing what happens with that. But the more I realize how little you really need to get by, like it's not, it's not like I, I'm homeless. I mean, I got a nice house. I got a three bedroom house. I got, you know, I got everything that I need, everything that I could possibly look for, uh, it, you know, in that manner. And the more I realize how little it actually requires of me to make that happen. And I see people who are always saving for a rainy day, but the rainy day may, may never even happen. And I think this year in particular, I, I feel like as this year goes on, especially if you live in America, you're going to see a lot of crazy stuff going on. And I think a lot more people are going to realize just how little this system that we live in does any good for us whatsoever. We are plugged into a system that takes tax money from us in every which way, shape, and form. And the reason that the rich keep getting richer is because they understand how to use this system to their benefit. And I think the more you look into that and the more you realize how I make like half of what I did at the post office, but I actually make more because of tax, tax it things. And so I actually have more take home now making half of what I did at the post office because of using this system to the way it's built. And I think the more people who look into this, the more people who use that, and we're all creators on this planet. Everything's creation. You know, we're all here to create something and help other people with that creation that we have created. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to make your entire living off this create creativity, but it doesn't mean that you can't either. So I, I think that more people who actually, like what did you do as a kid that you always loved? Or what do you, what do you think about now when, you, when you're thinking of something that makes you happy? And, and you know, whatever that might be. Now, like sex, I, I don't think everybody wants to go out and be a porn star or anything like that. So if you say something along those lines, maybe that's not going to work. But if you say, I don't know, like I said, I knew this guy who was like really into apples and apple orchards and, and just knew everything about apples, everything that you could possibly know about apples. He knew how to do everything, can them, cook them, grow them, had plenty of trees. But he worked at the post office and I'm like, why are you doing this? I said, you've got a farm. I said, you, you've got all this knowledge with apples and yet you come to a job that you hate. I mean, he complained about it every day. He hated this job. It's not like he liked it. If he liked it, I could see it, you know, that, that being fine. And he's like, well, it's a safe route. I said, nothing is a safe route. I said, anything could happen on any day. We are not guaranteed anything more than the time that we're in right now. Why not just go spend it with your apples? Because he was working however many hours he worked at the post office and then he was going home and he was working all those hours at this apple orchard that he had. I said, you could just be working at the apple orchard. I said, you sell these apples, right? And he's like, yeah. I said, why not just make this a full time? Why not put a bakery or something like that on your property and, uh, and you know, or sell canned and, and make apple butters and stuff like that? I mean, it was, this was back in when I lived in uh, East Pennsylvania and there was a lot of that going on over there, you know, it's, uh, in the, just north of Philadelphia or Philly. And he couldn't do it. And I've met so many people like this that just, they had such a passion for something. And I'm almost jealous of that because I don't, I, I, I'm good at almost everything I touch. And most people get irritated with me. They're like, you can draw this good. You can photograph this good. You can do this, this good. And you just don't do any of it. So it's almost like I watch, I watch people who are so good at just one thing. And most of the people who I know who are extremely successful and live the life of their dreams are only good at like one thing and they just do that one thing. I think those of us who are good at most multiple things are the ones that get hung up on, on life and, and everything you know that it has to maybe offer and maybe not offer depending on which way you look at it. As we head into this year, I think it would be a real beneficial thing for everybody to look at what they're actually good at and see if they could just at least let that into their life for a little while. And if you let it into your life for a little while, can you get it to a point where it is something that could sustain you 
financially and you don't here's the thing like you put something out there you just say like I don't know for an example you might be a writer and you just say every morning when you wake up you just say I am a writer I am a writer I am a writer or you might you know you might like writing music so every morning when you wake up look in the mirror and say I am a musician I am a writer I am a photographer whatever it is I am a video maker I am a and you fill in the blank because I am is a very powerful statement. It's, it's a statement of creation. And if you look at the Bible, when, they, when someone asked who God was, he just said, I am who I am. And if you use those exact words, you can actually sit there in like a meditation and say, I am, I am, I am. And you'll start seeing, or you'll start feeling like this energy around that. And you just start saying, I am a creator. I am a writer. I am whatever that that might be and your world will start building around a lot of people get caught up in the how is this going to happen how is this going to work what am i going to do with this how am i going to do this they overthink everything the reason i know that is because i've done it myself but the less of that you actually do and the more you actually just do what you want to do you notice that things come into fruition that you didn't even know were, was possible like for example when i ran my photography studio I told this story in a couple of videos ago. I didn't even pay for my own studio. I didn't even, I just had the thought, I said, I'm a photographer. I, you know, I was out, I was out in the field. I was, I would find, you know, different models and stuff like that. And we would go do just different things out, out in the, in the world. Right. And I got tired of that because I live in an area that like right now it's not snowing, but it's like 20 degrees, you know, 25 degrees outside. So not too many models feel like working out in that and I don't feel like working out in that and then batteries die quicker and it's just a pain in the ass. So I started putting it out there. I said, you know, I am a photographer. I'm going to have a studio and a guy that I worked with at one of the insurance companies that I worked at who had money. He came up to me. He's like, you know, I've seen what you do. He's like, you're really good. You shouldn't even be doing this. You should be doing photography. Why don't I help you rent out a studio? I said, okay. So I said, I know, I know a few guys here. I'll talk to another couple people. And I actually worked at a camera store at that time. So and down, down in the city and, um, I, I came across a lot of people. So I, I, I came across this guy, I talked to him. I said, I, I really need a studio to rent out and it, it all worked out and the guy paid for it and everything like that. And I, I was at the studio all the time. And at that time I really didn't have any models or anything like that. I really didn't have any, anybody to, you know, to photograph. And then I told the story, you know, a couple of videos ago that my buddy who was a model at the time was like, you know, I've got this friend, um, you may have met her, uh, you know, in one of these times, you know, we found out and I hadn't actually, and he gave me her name and she came in and we started working together and she's like, wow, you're like the first photographer that actually cares about what I have to say. And I said, well, I'm, you know, I'll take any idea. And she was good with social media. So it just took off. I mean, I had, I had models coming in from all over the place, uh, you know, all over the Eastern seaboard, all over, you know, all over the middle of the country, you know, from anywhere from New York down to actually, I had some people from Boston, from Boston, all the way down to Miami. And then some people in Chicago and people here and just models from all over the place. Now, I don't really show my photographs because most of it's copyrighted right, by other people and I don't feel like getting into that, but it's it took off so fast. It was daunting to me and I, I self-sabotaged and I moved to Philly because I figured if I could get that working here in a smaller market, I could certainly get it working there and it, it never happened that I didn't have that magic anymore. I didn't have that connections. And that's when I talked about relationships in the last video, like the relationships you have is also something that's going to drive you forward. So if you move to an area where I just knew the woman, you know, that I was dating at the time, that was it. I didn't know anybody else there. And I didn't have any connections really there. I had more connections in New York than I did in Philly. And I probably would have been better off going there. So it's a combination of everything. It's a combination of these relationships that you set up over the years. It's a combination of you just knowing that you are so like I am whatever it is and everything 
will eventually start molding around. Now, however much resistance you bring to this though, is how much longer it's gonna actually take to come to fruition. So if you're one of these people that is very type A, very needs to see everything just written out, typed out, everything just, you know, the I's dotted and the T's crossed and everything like that, it might take a lot longer for it to come to fruition because you are that person that needs to see it before they believe it. Whereas if you're somebody who believes it before they see it, it's going to manifest itself a whole lot faster. Now, I don't think there's any right way to do it, but I do think there's faster's way to, faster ways to do it. But like I said, in this, in this year, I mean, the thing, the whole thing is just falling apart. They're trying so hard to lock us down and gra grasping at straws and, you know, doing whatever they can to have control. And, and you can see a, a lot of people are bowing down to it, but a lot of other people are like, I don't feel like working this nine to five. I don't like this 40 hour thing. I'm working this 40 hours over here and it's still not paying for my bills, right? I'm struggling, I gotta work two jobs and I gotta do this. Meanwhile, they got this other talent, like uh, one of the people my sister knows, uh, she just happened to she make um, some kind of like, I forget what it was, it was around, around weddings. She was making like personalized like invitation letters or something, I, I don't know, I had something, to, it was something along those lines. And she just happened to post it on TikTok and she just did this stuff in her spare time and it took off, right? It, it, got, it went viral and now she's making like 25 or $30,000 a month just off 10, it's like 10 different things that you can pay. She make 10 different designs and you pick it and she personalizes a little bit for you. I mean, just 10 different things. And she's making, you know, what some people are making in an entire uh, year, she's making in a month off this little just idea that she had. So it, it can happen quick, but you just have to know that I am this, I am that, I am whatever it is that you're looking for. And until I think you have that mentality, I don't, I don't know, you might be stuck in that nine to five and maybe that's what you like. Maybe most people really like that uh, stability unlike me holding this camera here. Some people like that stability. Some people really do. Some people need that stability. They need that health insurance. They need all that, you know, so-called, you know, safety. But I don't really believe there's much safety on this planet at all. I think this is, of all planets probably, this is probably the least safety conscious planet that you could possibly uh, reincarnate into. So when you have this inkling, or like here's another here's another thing, there's this idea, ideas go around to different people, right? You'll have this idea, and if you act on it, 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 the idea is yours, but if you don't act on it, that idea will go to somebody else. I don't know what an example of that is, I don't know, just to say like, an example is uh, like paint, I'm looking at a tube of paint over here, you have this idea for a new tube of paint, and, and you have the ability to make this new tube of paint, but you don't do it. And you sit on it for however long, it could be a day, week, month, year, whatever it is. And you sit on it for a while and, and you just don't do anything with it. Well, that idea is gonna get bored of you and it's gonna go to somebody else. And then all of a sudden you see this new tube of paint that you had created in your head, maybe even drew it down or whatever, on the market. It's on the market now. And you're like, how did that possibly happen? Or like, if you ever notice how, like there's scientific studies that have been been found over the years that, what is going on out here? That like multiple people have at the same time and they wouldn't even have connection to each other. The excitement in a small town here. Uh-oh, jab, 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 brew. <sighs> but yeah, think about this. Like, I think everybody has gone through that. Everybody's had this idea that somebody else at some point did because you didn't take the idea you were given the idea you were chosen and sometimes the idea is not right sometimes it's just not right for you but if it is if you really have that inclination to go for it what's the worst that you could lose man uh, you know like maybe a, a bit of money or a bit of time or something like that but what's what could you gain out of that i think that's what you have to ask yourself it, it, this could even be uh, you know diet like I, I get a lot of people coming into my channel and they're like well I haven't seen a scientific study that blah, 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 blah. Instead of like looking for five months at scientific studies to figure out what diet you should eat, you could just try that diet and see if it worked. It'd be your own study instead of looking at everybody else's. Yeah, it, it, it cracks me up because you get 
The same people who want the scientific study are the same people who will come into the comment section and say, well, everybody's an individual in it all. <laughs> and and no, no one thing works for anybody. But the same person wants a scientific study on a mass population that worked for them is also going to tell you that everybody's different. So what's the point of reading that study? Be your own study. And that's, it, it, that's in any aspect of life no matter what the, the topic is. Be your own study. Because if you're not, you're gonna be watching other people in this study. Did it work for them? Great. If not, great. But you could have figured that out for yourself. And if you're already fat, you only can go down. And if you go up a little bit, you're already fat in the first place. So you, you just became more of what you already are. I think that's all I have to say on this whole thing. This idea, uh, this idea of this video came to me this morning and I decided to put it into fruition. There has been, you know, there has been videos that I've I had ideas on and didn't put, uh, put out there and I've seen other people do it. Not that you can't do your own version of it. And I, here's another thing is plagiarism isn't a very good thing, but taking example of, I mean, if even when you watch movies or stuff like that, there is no movie scene that hasn't been somewhat already done. There's no, whatever you can think of. There's a vacuum sitting on, on this floor right here. There is vacuums already out there, but if you wanted to create a vacuum, it's already been done, but maybe you have a different variation of it that would help you out or uh, people out. So your idea is almost 100% likely already been done, but you put your own spin on it. You know, so a lot of people get apprehensive there. Well, like, oh, well, it's already been done. Nobody's gonna want mine. I mean, just think about it. Coca-Cola, actually, I think RC Cola came out before Coca-Cola. And then Coca-Cola came out and then Pepsi-Cola came out. They all are the same thing. They taste a little bit different. They're all the same thing. And they all still exist in the same marketplace. Uh, you know, like, I don't know, I do DoorDash. I pick up from chicken places a lot. There's how many chicken places out there? There's Chick-fil-A, KFC, Popeyes, you know, and then there's, you got the mom and pop ones and everything like that. So there's a market for what you had if the idea is good and if the idea comes for you in a good manner. And if it doesn't, you know, at least you tried, you know, trying is kind of failing, but at least you got some experience out of it. Some, you at least went for it, no matter, no matter what the outcome is, you know, anyway, comments, questions down below, like subscribe. And I don't know what kind of videos are going to be put out in the future. I'm going to do some food. I'm going to do some like this, but I, I just, I see it, you know, cause I'm out a lot and I just see the sadness and the loneliness and the just dread. I mean, you see so much dread when you go into these these places that I'm picking up from. The dread. You can feel it before you're even going in. And I'm like, oh. This is like Alan Watts was talking about, you know, at least bring some kind of comedy or joy or whatever it is to, even if you've got a mundane job, at least have fun with it. And you'll probably be the one that gets, you know, promotions and all that kind of stuff. And maybe you won't hate it anymore. But if you bring joy to things that you don't even like, can you imagine what kind of joy you're going to bring to things that you do like? And it might flourish into something that you never could have imagined. Anyway, I'm going to close this video out for the final time. I will talk to you in the next one.